Hi everyone and welcome back to Gold Price. In this video, we are looking at the Ryzen 9 7900. Now, this video is not a review, but I'm going to share something that can help you boost the performance of the 7900. And I have a long list of things to go through. Well, starting off, I've been an AM5, AMD M5 system user for ever since the launch and I really like it. And yes, even my work rig at the back there, it's on AM5. I'm using it for months now. Totally no problem. Absolutely loving it. So, now I'm a huge fan of the non-X model. So I'm using a 7600 as you've seen in my review before. I really like that one. And I also have a 7900. Absolutely nice CPU. But in case you didn't know it yet, these non-X models while they run at low power draw and low temperature, you can actually boost the performance. In my experience with the 7900, I got it to boost some like 20, almost 25% from the performance out of the box. Yes, one quarter of the performance that you get from the box. Of course, it will run warmer, but nevertheless, you know that you can get performance out of that. So in this video, what I can would like to show you is it's not even manual overclocking or fine tuning but just about loading some presets now before we proceed i come to know that many of you watching this channel are not subscribers yet so i do hope and that you will consider clicking that subscribe button and i really appreciate that you support a hobbyist content creator like myself now back to the 7900 yep for this video the 7900 is paired with an Ashrock B650E Steel Legend and then I'm using the Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5 RGB memory that's it's a 7200 MHz kit I'm running at 62 6400 CL32 and for the cooling I'm using the Deep Cool CLC which is the LS520 now that um, moving forward Let's uh, have a bit of understanding of what these presets are. Now, I'm using an Astro board, yes, but every board manufacturer has their own presets. So I encourage you to look into your board manual, understand what they offer, and you can try it out, try those settings. So in this case, the Astro BIOS, which I'm going to show you on the screen right now, it is misleading actually, because the options in there, you see, it's all about PBO. And the first option being auto is actually not auto because the first option is actually disabled. So the PBO is not there. You get the CPU auto means default performance of not boosting anything. Therefore, it actually should be disabled. I don't know why they put auto, but nevertheless, in this auto setting, the PBO is not there and it will run at very cool um, very cool operating temperature so what you get is a very cooling system that does not draw much power and in order to get more performance out of it it would be the rest of the options that are available there so I compare both auto which is disabled and then with PBO enabled and there's no performance difference when it comes to the gaming benchmarks though because it does not boost, boost the single core clock. But when it comes to Cinebench multi-core workload, it gained massive lead on the score with the PBO enabled. And for the VG Resolve, to process a 5 minute 4K25 footage on H.264, the time did reduce. I can't be going through all the presets, as you can see there's so many of it. And therefore, I will just go through a few with the PBO enabled and also with the temperature cap and voltage reduction. With this, I'll have to explain a bit what these things do. I'll show you on the screen the options again. With PBO, what PBO does is that it boosts the clock speed. It will boost as much as it can based on the temperature limit, which is for this one, should be 95 degrees Celsius. And it will draw as much power, boost as much clock as it can. And with that, the difference is huge. Without PBO, it runs at just about 60 degrees Celsius while with PBO enabled it boosts to with a boost the temperature actually 
harvest in the average of about 90 degrees Celsius. And this is average, it's not peak, this is average when I'm running blender workload. When you set the temperature limit, it will still boost. However, it will lower down the, the, the power draw to maintain at that temperature level. So what you get is a control a control, let's say, let's say control performance based on the temperature. Over to the next type of option, you will see that there is the voltage under volting. It's like minus 20, minus 30, minus 40. All these will tell, it's like, it will force the system to draw less power. You see, when you are running all these things, it will draw power to boost. And with the setting, when you set the limit, it will actually offset. So you're forcing the system to take in less power so it generates less heat and with less heat generated it can go higher clock so and with that i'll just have to give you an example because this is how an amd system works so i'm going to put the device down okay so let's say the settings is with a certain setting you reach 5 gigahertz and 85 degrees celsius and when it draws lesser power for the same clock speed it can be running at a few degrees lower let's say 82 or 83 and when the system say, says it's like that, it has headroom of 3 degrees Celsius, what it'll do is it'll draw more power to boost everything, the clocks higher until it reaches the temperature limit of 85 degrees Celsius. So you understand where it goes now. Let's look at the chart here for you to understand it better. As you can see from my preset, on auto, it runs at the average of around 4.3 gigahertz and the temperature being around 60 degrees Celsius, very low. With PBO enabled, it goes to about 5 GHz and running at around 88 degrees Celsius, which is very high. With the temperature and voltage reduction set, I got 5.16 GHz average at 85 degrees Celsius on the minus 30 and 5.2 GHz at 85 degrees Celsius, which is same temperature, on the minus 40 preset. And this is exactly how I tuned my 7600, but that was with manual tuning. This one, I'm using the presets available on the motherboard without even having to resort to AMD's Ryzen Master software. Check out the difference here for Cinebench multi-core workload. With the results with PBO, it looks like it's from another CPU, which probably is the closest to like the 7900X's performance, which is why I like the non-X models. Enable the PBO if you want the performance to be like the 7900X at lesser price point or disable the PBO to run it cool and quiet. After that, there's the Vinci Resolve where it shaved off some 20 seconds for the same task, which is some 15% reduction in total work time. And that is actually very helpful for those of you who are doing CPU intensive workload. And with that, I come to the end of this video. I hope this video will be helpful to you because um, you might be using a CPU like this and without diving into like the details in the BIOS, you never know what you're missing out. And yeah, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching. I look forward to see you in my upcoming videos. There are more findings to share and more reviews to come. That's all for this one and bye-bye.